everybody. Welcome back to another one. In today's episode, I think we're going to do something that I haven't done in a little while. And that is go out to the lease, check some trail cameras. Uh, of course, I'll throw in pictures like I generally do. And we're going to see what's out there. Um, the first spot we're going to go to is what I call the access spot. It's where that access deer have been showing up. And uh, something really cool that I want to share with you that is related to that stand, that specific spot. Because my dad and I came out to the lease uh, two days ago, two days ago or three days ago, a um, couple of days ago anyway, we're driving in the property and these axes, as we're coming across the creek, they start running across the road. So I'm like, all right, cool, you know, and that's exciting to me because I was starting to get a little discouraged. I hadn't seen the axis in probably two weeks on the truck camera. They just disappeared. I don't know. Then I, it dawned on me, I got to thinking about it, and I was like, well, I guess I understand why they're not really slowing down to eat very much of anything. Because number one, they like to graze, so they're going to choose green grass over corn anyways. But secondly, it's July, end of June, early July. So they're rutting, um, is basically the point that I'm trying to make. The buck's going to keep those, all those does pushed around. And guys, I hope that we have trail camera pictures of this buck because when I saw him in person, oh, I was blown away. I was like, oh my gosh, like he is a stud. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and give him probably 27, 28 inches. Not super wide. He's kind of pencily, but I think he's a stud. I think he's, you know, he's a solid deer. I will for sure say that. Moving forward, um, I want to tell you guys that I've also moved a spot around on my lease. It's a spot that I haven't hunted pretty much like in a year and i haven't hunted it in about a year because it's literally been underwater the feeder has um it got all the way up like over the motor box one time and i'm pretty sure that it fried something or at least fried the uh timer so i got a new timer i got a new battery we're gonna go throw those in that feeder i filled it a few days ago pulled the feeder out of the water and moved it and then re-t posted it staked it down so the cows can't push it over or anything like that and then i moved uh, one stand one tripod i moved it over to a different group of trees and i also put up a, a hang hanger <laughs> i almost said I, I was mixing my words between hang on and climber <laughs> it's a it's a hang on um but i put a hang on up there as well with the tripod and i have a spot now where two people can hunt with me like my mom or my dad or whoever but we'll climb up in the stand i'll show you that new setup because i'm super pumped about it like i've just got a good feeling about it so we're gonna run through to this first spot first it's gonna be the access spot we're gonna check the camera dump out some more bait and then we're gonna move from there to the other spot where um, I just moved, like the new spot, I'll, I guess I'll call it, I'll call it the new spot. For those of you longtime viewers that have been watching the channel for a, at least over a year now, you guys have seen me hunt from this stand before. So um, you'll recognize it, but it, it's changed. So anyways, we're gonna, we're gonna get all of our stuff loaded and head that way. She wants some corn, but it's not for her. Oh look, I got the whole group of them. Little suckers. So I've got some really good news. I just looked at that camera and the axes are in there. But the buck that I got pictures of is not the same buck that I saw three days ago. I just, I slipped in, dumped the corn, checked the card, slipped right back out. Um, I didn't want to stand there and talk or say anything because I didn't want to screw it up. I may come sit it this evening, but that's awesome. So now I'm hoping that They'll get used to it. They'll get used to the bait being down and they'll keep showing up. And with that being said as well, in addition to my bait, I'm also gonna get a bell of alfalfa out there because they love alfalfa. So walking back to the truck now, gotta grab battery and timer and we're headed to the next spot. 
Okay, so I'm headed to the next spot now, like I was telling you guys. And I just got to thinking about it. I was like, this is after I've already walked away from the truck, obviously, because I'm headed that direction. But I'm like, you know what? I'm going to get all the way over here, and I'm going to have an opportunity to shoot either a pig or an axis. And I didn't bring my bow. <laughs> Which, yeah, that's usually how it goes. But anyways, hopefully I don't walk up on something and need my bow and have to turn around, walk all the way back, and then come back again. And hope that they're still there and be able to get a shot. But anyways, um, what I'm putting in this feeder is I'm gonna put in um, a new timer and a new battery, like I said. But this is the kind of timer that I use. I've had great luck with them, really like them. I know a lot of people use the Wild Game Innovations one. Um, people use all kinds of different timers, of course, but I um, just want to let you guys know that this is what I use. I've had great luck with it. Um, every single one that I've ever put in, unless they were damaged by a stupid raccoon or a squirrel or water or something, they've lasted years. I haven't had to replace them. So, just in case you, were, you guys were uh, maybe curious about what I use, it's the timer <laughs> so we're gonna get on over here i can't wait to show you guys this new setup i hope you are as excited about it as i am because it was a lot of work between me and my dad to get this spot set up and back and running and i'm hoping that whenever i do get it back up and running i'll have pigs at it i'll have deer at it maybe some axis will show up to it who knows but this will be good times i can't wait to get over here and show you guys this new spot Did you guys see that? I knew that was gonna happen. That was the axis. That sucks. Cause they ran right to this feeder, right to the spot where I'm going. They're just taking the long way around basically. Man. I knew that was gonna happen. I knew that I was gonna come walking through here and those axes were gonna catch me. I just had a feeling, but it is what it is. I'm still gonna slip in here, put this battery and timer in there, and then slip out of here. I wanted to take the road, because the grass is way shorter. I don't have my chippy walls on. Hopefully I don't find a rattlesnake. cool there was white fallow that were directly under my stand but they were on the other side of the fence this is my spot that backs up to the high fence my lease isn't high fenced but um this one little section on the property is high fenced but i don't know if you guys can still see them running through there those white fallow some absolute studs there's some stud white fallow in there stud red deer red uh Red stag, lots of big bulls. You, may, you guys may be able to see them in through there. Those fallow were bedded like right here. <laughs> right on, right next to my stand. I hope that, uh, I hope that the fallow and all these other animals um, that are on this side of the, the high fence, I hope that they don't ever get out because now they're, all these animals are competing with my white tail. Would it be cool to have it more than just you know, access on this lease? Yeah, but before too long, I'm gonna be completely covered up in axis. And I'm not complaining. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but I wanna hunt white tails too. So um, those axis and the white tail, they don't get along together. They'll bully each other off of feeders or whatever. But um, so yeah, this is, this is a new spot. So here's the tripod. I got a wet seat. 
But this is the tripod. This is my hang-on stand. And I gotta put a tree peg in like right there. That way I can step from the platform here to a tree peg to this platform so I can hunt out of this. And it gives you a perfect view. Same thing with up here. It's a super cool little spot. I love this setup. You guys see that llama down there? Yeah, well, that little sucker spent most of the time here at this feeder. I didn't see any deer, or any axis, or any pigs, but now that this thing is going off in the next probably four or five days or so, should be real good. So I'm going to throw this camera, or this card back in this camera, and we're going to get on out of here and go check the next spot, the next feeder. Or she's on eggs. I don't see any eggs. Hmm. I'm not gonna bother. <laughs> Just as soon as I look at that uh, that turkey. I mean, I got this close to her, guys. That was cool. Have, have y'all ever seen anything like that before? She, she acted like she might have been hurt. But most of the time, whenever a hen even sees something that's out of the whack, out of the ordinary, they take off. She just laid there. So I guess she's on a, on a nest or something, but I turn around, <laughs> walking away from the turkey, and look what we have. No shed. Little bitty buck. <laughs> that's cool. That's the first shed I've ever found out here. Well, I think that's the first shed I've, I've ever found out here that I can remember anyway it is. So that's cool. But we're just, we're doing all kinds of fun things today, guys. <laughs> Those axes are right down in here, so I'm trying to keep my voice down just a little bit. But we found a shed. We walked within five feet of a turkey. And she didn't move <laughs> until I started talking. And then, uh, yeah, hopefully there's something good on this camera over here. That'd be sweet. I'm trying to make my decision where I want to sit tonight. If the wind isn't going to be too swirly. But Oh yeah, another thing. I ended up not putting this timer in there. Because uh, the other one that was in it was good. So, get to keep an extra timer for just in case. But we're headed to the next spot now. Guys, I want to know. Um, have y'all ever snuck up on a turkey like that before? I mean, I wasn't really trying to be all that quiet. I was being... I mean, somewhat quiet, but... That was neat. I've never seen anything like that before. What's something else? You guys let me know down let me know down in the comments below. Tell me if y'all have ever gotten that close to a wild turkey before. Uh, she must have been I think that's probably what she was doing, sitting on a nest. I think that's what they're doing right now. I don't know. You guys tell me. Um, I didn't want to mess with her too much because well if she is sitting on a nest or sitting on eggs or something, I don't want her to Leave them. So this place looks like it's been getting picked up every morning and every night, so that's good. Let's check this guy. How many pictures do we have? Come on. Five 
129 in three days. It's starting to be good. I just got the absolute crap scared out of me. So I'm walking out of the big field and right here in this row of trees was a doe bedded up. And well, she was probably from the meat of that mesquite tree right there. So about 10 yards, she jumped up and took off. Scared the crap out of me. But anyways guys, uh, I started looking through those pictures and I noticed the pigs were there. They were showing up super, super late, which is okay, but uh, the pigs were there. And then those bucks, what do you guys think about that? Um, I've got, I've got some good looking up and comers. I really like that buck that's real wide. Um, I, I can't tell how old he is. I think he's probably three and a half, four and a half range. Um, it's really hard to judge the age of a whitetail this time of year with the kind of coat that they have on them. Their colors are different. Um, of course, by the time deer season gets here, they'll have another like three months worth of growing to do. So, like body-wise, I mean, and their antlers still have a long ways to go because it's still June, I think, or today's July 1st, I don't remember which, but anyways, they've still got a solid two months of growing left. Those bucks are gonna be some studs. I can't wait to watch them all summer and then hopefully we can get in here this fall and get it done, but it's super exciting to see all these bucks bachelored up like this and uh, hitting the feeder. They do it out here every year, and I love watching them through the summer come to the feeders and, and eat. It's just, uh, it's really cool. Um, another thing that I wanted to point out to you guys was, um, I don't know if you saw it or not, but there's a 10 point in there, right? So on this particular lease, in this area in general, we see a lot, I mean a lot of eight points. In the last two years, I've shot eight points. Um, but managing the herd, like I am, I'm starting to see some 10 pointers, which is super cool to me. I mean, they're just completely typical mainframe 10, and it may not be, it may not be a giant or anything, but it's still a really cool to see your management start paying off. And I, there was, I guess it was two years ago, I shot a, a crappy looking little spike. He was two and a half, three and a half years old junky little deer got him out of the herd but it's just it's cool to start seeing your management working out for you not many people understand or grasp the concept of conservation through hunting and um, just keeping track with my trail camera pictures and three sp spots going two feeders and then one just one spot that's just baited and uh, three trail cameras out i've started to see more deer not only in person but also on the trail cameras than I did whenever I first got on this place probably two or three years ago. Two or three years ago, whenever I first got on, there were some deer, and I shot a good buck that year. He was a real nice eight point with really tall brow tines, but it just, if, if you went out and sat, I'd say out of the five times, let's just say you go five times in a week, and out of those five times, you're probably gonna see deer twice. And now, especially this past season, I've noticed that Every single time I've gone out, it's like, well, I say every single time, almost every single time, probably like 80 or 85% of the time I see deer. So that's uh, super encouraging. It's super awesome to me. This, this past season, I took a really old doe. I got her out of the way. And now I've been seeing fawns all over the place. These younger uh, does are being bred. It's, it's just a... Uh, one of those deals, you gotta manage your herds. You gotta get the old ones out. You gotta take the management animals, and um, if you get lucky enough and it comes around to it, and you get to take a trophy buck, that's awesome too. And unfortunately, um, I've been blessed enough in the last couple of years to, to do so. And I hope this year remains the same as well. But guys, let me, uh, let me know down in the comments section if you are also seeing some bucks, and uh, if you guys got some good up-and-comers, it looks like you're gonna have a good season. I like hearing from you guys and like knowing what y'all got going on too. So, um, Also, let me know if you enjoyed this vlog. I really did enjoy this one. This one was a lot of fun. Um, I almost didn't pick up the camera whenever I came out here. And I'm really glad that I did now because we did all kinds of fun stuff today. Found a shed. Walked up on a turkey. We saw the axis, finally. I've been showing you guys trail camera pictures. But I finally got the chance to see him in person. Hopefully I didn't spook him too bad. But... 
anyways lots of cool stuff so love you guys thanks so much for watching be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and again please let me know what you think about the vlogs if you want to keep seeing them this is kind of my sunday afternoon routine and it's a whole lot of fun to me so love you guys and uh i'll see you tomorrow